Greetings, thanks for joining me once again. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. We're going to get started with Priority Plus, our work organizer, our little work scheduler, a time management program, whatever you want to call it, but it's a to-do list. It's a never-ending to-do list that shows you how to manage your workload. You've seen the trailer, I'm sure. If you've seen the trailer, you'll know what it can do. This little program is truly awesome. Let's get started. We've got to do some basic work first. What I want you to do is go to the lists sheet. If you want to show your worksheets, just go to file and then choose the options and we'll then go to the advanced tab scroll down till you find show worksheets at the bottom here and you can say okay now you can do that if you want but i've left the navigation in if you've downloaded this template you'll be able to access it from here so we're going to go to lists and we want to create in here some dynamic named ranges dynamic named ranges for department for contact for status for priority and then another dynamic named range to pick up both of those together both contact and phone number what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the first one i'll put it in there's many tutorials on the website about how to create dynamic named ranges i'll give you a practical demonstration now about doing one or two of them and then after that you can copy them from the website or get some practice in putting them in yourself so let's have a look at the named ranges we want first of all well our first dynamic named range is going to be here in for department so what I want you to do is to just click on the word emergency, which is our first reference under the heading department. Go to the formula tab and choose name manager, and then we're going to choose new. Now I'm going to expand this because dynamic named ranges are just a little bit longer than normal named ranges, and I'll pull it up here so that in our video you'll be able to see it very clearly. The name that we want to give this is in fact department. So we'll just call it department. And we want to start by using the offset formula. So we'll use equals offset. Open bracket. And then just click into the emergency cell where we are there. We don't want to offset any rows, which is what we're now being asked to do, or columns. So put in three commas and then use counter. and open brackets once again. Now we need to scroll over the range for the dynamic named range. Now a lot of people just get up here and click on the whole column and go DD. That's not a very effective way to create a dynamic named range. Trust me, you'll get in, inconsistent results. So let's give it a, a specific realm that it can work in. It can be dynamic, let's say up to that amount, which is to sell C41, all right? That's as far as, we're not gonna have more departments than that, surely, unless you work for the government. All right, so we'll just close it off and our dynamic named range should be working. Let's give it a test. Beautiful, you notice that it's accurate, it's picked up exactly what we want. So if we were to type in another name here now, it would work just fine for us. So let's put in another ward, ward 5R. And we'll go and check our dynamic named range now. We'll choose department and just test it. Now if I could just say to you, you notice it's picked that up. If ever you're creating any named range, whether it be a static named range, a dynamic named range, always test it. Don't assume that you can just go along, copy the, the uh, formula from somewhere, pop it in and it's going to work. Always test. Because you might just put something a little bit wrong and it won't work for you. Now that you've seen how that is done, we want to create several other dynamic named ranges. We want to create a dynamic named range for contact. We want one for phone, and we want one for status and priority. Now these will be on the website. I'm not going to hold you up in this video any longer, but I'm going to pop these in. You can go to the website and get these formulas. Now, I just want to show you the dynamic named ranges that we have put in here to date. I'll run you through them one at a time. So I'll put the box over here. We'll just choose contact which is going to give us all our contacts, all the names of the people that we're going to refer to. So that's good, that's going to work all right for us. Phone will give us the contact and the phone number, which is our next one here. You see it's picking up both of those. After that, we have also put in priority, which is picking up our priority. We also have status, 
which is picking up the status over here. And there's one more in here as well. It's on a different sheet. It's entitled deadline. And here it is over here. It's the deadline, the date when the little task has to be finalized by. That's the deadline. So please go ahead and put in all of those dynamic named ranges. They'll all be on the website, but why not take the opportunity to create them yourself? And you know, when you've done a few of them, then you'll find it's much, much easier and you'll be able to then do them on the fly at work and impress your colleagues as well. Now, just before we leave this sheet, put in here your departments, or if you want to just run with the ones I've got in here for now and you can change them later once you've developed your application. So your departments, your contacts, phone numbers, the status and the priorities, because we're going to go over now and put in some special data validation into our to-do list. So let's go back to the to-do list, click on the button up here to take us to the to-do list and we'll start adding our data validation. And I'll show you what's a little bit different with it as well. Now, if you've downloaded the template from the website, you'll notice that the data validation is already in here for you, but I want to show you what we've done with it. So once you put those dynamic name ranges in, and if you've called them the same names as I mentioned, all this data validation will automatically work for you. So we should have priority. Now I just want to take a moment to show you the type of data validation that we're putting in here. It's a little bit different because we want to allow the user to override the data validation and put in any term that they want. So just click in any cell that has the data validation here, choose data, and then data validation. A dialog box will appear here. Now you notice we've got here department selected. If you're putting in new data validation, you just click into the source box, hit the F3 key, and all of your named ranges will come up. We would then just choose department and OK. But what we're in particular focusing on here is the error message. It's not the stop message that we want in here. It is the information message. And along with that, I put a title in that says, please check this department is not on the list, you can still add it here if you want, and choose OK. Now that will enable the user to be able to go in and add any sort of gobbledygook that they want, and the message is going to come up and say, this isn't on the list, and we say, OK, but I still want to include that. Now why is that? Well, you might just have a bit of a rogue order or a rogue job, something that you're not going to be using all the time, it's not worth adding it to your department list or contact and phone number. You just want to put it in there to remind yourself to do it and you know you'll never do it again, so you just need to override that data validation. And that's how you do it. Now into this cell here, what I want you to do is we're going to put in a VLOOKUP formula. So we're going to go equals VLOOKUP and we want to look up the information here. That's our lookup value, as you see there. Then we want the table array. Well, what is the table array? The table array that we're looking at is the table array called phone. But to find it easily, just at this stage, hit the F3 key, and you'll find that there'll be a list in here called phone. Just click into phone, and then it says, after you put in the comma, it's going to move along column index. Well, that was two columns, wasn't it? That was the name and then the phone number. So we're just going to click into here and we'll put column two. Comma again, and it's asking, do we want an exact match, which will be false? You could type in false if you want, or you could just put zero, which is what we're going to do because we're going to put in some error handling into this and this is going to be a bit of a long formula. So now it's looked up the phone for us. And if we were to copy that down, copy that formula down, that would be fine, it would work great, until we get to the fact where there's no data for it to look up and it says there's nothing available, we get an NA error. So that's not really suitable for us. We need to put in some error handling. How are we going to do that? So what we want to do is make sure that this formula that we see here will not pick up the NA error that will occur because there's no data for it to look up. So we're going to use a little bit of error handling in front of this. It's just an if statement that is if is NA, and then an open bracket. So it's saying if this formula results in an NA value, not a applicable value, then we want to do something. We'll put a second closing bracket here because we've got two to the left here. And then we're going to say, what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to say there's nothing in there. Another comma, and all you do is grab this piece of formula here, right over including one or two brackets, copy it over, 
and pop it over to the right and then hit the enter key. Now scroll that down and you'll find that it will cover the NA error. If there's an NA error now, it should appear as blank. So we'll see. Okay, so now if there's an NA error, it's making this cell have zero, I'm sorry, have nothing, not zero value, nothing. So that's now done for us. What's our next step? Well, what our next step is we want to put in some conditional formatting into here. What do we want to do? with this conditional formatting. Well, I, what I would like is that when any of this information here is medium, I'd like it to be a nice soft color. But if it's low, I'd like it to be another color. And if it's high, I'd like it to be another color. And if it's whatever, I want it to be blank. So depending on the value we put in here, we want to change all of these cells across here. Now we need to use a little simple formula in our conditional formatting to do this. Right, so highlight those cells across there. Go onto the Home tab and choose Conditional Formatting and I'll show you what to do. Choose New Rule into here. I'll pull this down underneath and choose use a formula to determine which cells to format. And here is our formula. Just put equals and then it is this cell here. Equals. And then we want to put in our double quotes because what is the text it needs to equal? Well, if it equals medium, and it isn't case sensitive, even though I've typed it in that way, then let's format this cell. How do we want to format the cell? Well, we'll format the cell with a fill color that's nice and soft. We're going to use something that's very, very soft. So perhaps a, a very light, um, movie color, something very, very soft. That one there, that'll do us. And choose OK. Now, we'll go back to this formula here. You notice it says it's an absolute reference, G and 6. Just take the absolute or the dollar sign from in front of the 6 because we want this to scroll down. Equals medium. OK, let's choose that and see if it worked. Yes, that says medium and so it's going to affect that all the way across. So click into there again. Highlight those row of cells once again. Go to the Home tab to Conditional Formatting. Choose Manage Rules. And this time say New Rule. Use the same formula once again. We'll choose Equals. Click into here again. And remove the dollar sign so that Relative is the row. Absolute is the column. Choose Format. Sorry, go back there. I forgot to put in our parameter. Our parameter is if it equals, our next one is going to be low. Inverted commas once again. And the format that we're going to put for this is a nice soft green. Just make it that color green. And we go OK and OK. Let's put in our third rule, a new rule once again. Here's our formula. Getting very easy now. We've done it a few times. Click into our cell. Remove the absolute reference from the row, equals, and this time it's going to be high. And what do we want to format? Well, let's choose a nice soft pink. Now, I mean, you can choose whatever colors you want here. I don't like to have really stark colors on my worksheets and my applications. Puts you off if you're working with them for a long time. All right, so now we have three criteria in there. And they're all relative to rows, but absolute to columns and they all change color depending on the text that's in the cell. That's exactly what we want. So what we can do with that highlighted is just right click and go copy, and then select the range that we're going to go all over, all the way down to the bottom, right through to here, right click and choose paste special, and I guess you guessed it, paste formats into here. All done. Now when we look at our spreadsheet, I'll hit the escape key to clear the clipboard. I'll hit the and you can now see when we look at our spreadsheet, everything is beautiful. If we change something, a priority in here, if we change this from medium, for instance, to a high priority, well then the whole color of that is going to change. We want to put some similar conditional formatting over here, but this time we want it to be relevant to the status. So highlight the three cells, choose conditional formatting, and we're going to choose new rule. Our new rule will be a formula once again. 
and we'll choose the equal sign and this time it will be based on in progress. So we'll click into there, we'll remove the row specific or absolute reference and we're going to say equals exactly the same as before in progress. What do we want the colour to be? Well we're going to format this colour to be a bit of a, a, a yellowy colour but a bit darker than what we had before. So you might want to actually go into the more colours and just choose something in here that isn't too too light. We might choose that one there and we'll go OK. You can whatever suits your taste here. All right, and we'll go OK there. While we're clicked in there, we'll go New Conditional Formatting and Manage Rules. And we're going to add a new rule. Exactly the same as before. Now you can go ahead and put the other two parameters in here. The other two parameters are for Not Started and Completed. And put the colors in that you want. So if we were to look at our conditional formatting, the Manage Rules dialog box will come up and this is the way it should look. The colors would change depending on your personal preference, but that's how it would be. Here's our formula, here's our range that it applies to. Let's click OK, do the same thing again, just right click and choose Copy, then highlight the rows and columns that we want this to apply to all the way to the bottom of our to-do list. Right click and choose Paste Special and Paste Formats once again to be able to add in this conditional formatting. So now you can see we have two sets of conditional formatting. One that is going to get show us generally what is the priority of this situation and the other is going to show us the progress status of this. This is probably a little bit stark. I noticed on the video a lot of these colors didn't show up so I did them slightly darker than I would actually do them in a, a real application. All right, I think we'll leave our tutorials there. In our next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at adding some formula, some code going into the VBA editor and we're going to use that code to be able to sort our data and to archive our data. So that will be the basis of our next tutorial. This is Trev from Online PC Learning. Thank you very much for listening to this tutorial and bye for now.